Oh yeah, for sure. You got to leave your ego at home, one hundred percent. Because about that the ego thing, yes. Yeah. So people, get, I mean, everybody on cat, especially big, big cats, um, they, you know, I, I, seasoned managers are usually pr pretty calm and collected. I think it's been my experience, you know, on doing major hurricanes and things like that. But maybe you get somebody that got promoted up to, you know, they 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 don't want to go out and climb roofs. So they want to be a manager, and so now they're your manager, right? And they may be kind of new, but the, so the the anxiety and the stress. There's a lot of even 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 if somebody is calm and collected, I think there's still a lot of pressure coming from the top. The guys yeah. get those claims turned over. They got to get money into the insurance hands. They got to get these inspected and closed so that they can move the insurance to the next step in the process. Right. right. Um, so everybody's under pressure, and the the it, my point here is is to say that sometimes um, there are some gruff personalities, right? even if they're not, you know even if they're not just reacting to pressure, they're just gruff, right? And they may be a little bit bossy or, or a little bit overcritical or what do you mean you don't have this? What do you, how did you even get, you know, kind of, the other managers say that to people and the new person's just standing there just shaking like, I, I don't know, I mean, they just said it. To, so I think that if, if a new adjuster can leave their ego at home and just never take anything personally from any person at all that you run into in, in the entire claims process, even if you're standing in line at the grocery store, just picking up, you know, grocery store sushi and you're wearing your shirt with this, the company logo on it. And somebody says, Oh, wow, blah, blah, blah. Insurance company. Well, I had them and they screwed me over. Blah, blah, blah. I'm really sorry, sir. I don't know anything about your claim. I didn't so just buy and just get out of here. Right. Instead of like starting an argument with that person, um, the ego thing's pretty big. And I, I, I really, the communication piece, I don't think that can really be overstressed because there's so many, so many, ways that that communication um component can fall apart and your point about prioritizing tasks in the time blocks where you say all right from 6 a.m to 8 a.m i'm doing corrections right or i'm doing i'm doing stuff in in admin stuff in the computer and in, in exactimator job. whatever it is that's your job at that yeah. time right phone rings i'm i'm not personally i'm not answering the phone i'm not turning the tv on i'm not listening to the radio i might eat like you know a couple of hard boiled eggs or whatever I got from downstairs at the hotel, but, um, and drink some coffee. But then when you're, when you're on your, you, you, and you call that a time block, right? So that's a, we'll call that our first morning time block for admin, right? And then our next time block is field time block. And that's three hours or four hours from eight 30 to whatever. Right. And in that time, I'm not writing estimates. I'm personally, unless it's like an emergency or the per same person keeps calling me a bunch, I'm not answering my phone either because if I'm standing up on a roof and I'm in the middle of my scope and it's, I get interrupted, Hey, listen, you know, I, my, my contractor said, blah, blah, blah. And they want, they want to like, you got to like go look in the computer. So you climb down off the roof and get in your truck and like pull their file. You're just interrupting everything. Right. So that's Absolutely the, right. the efficient efficiency is prioritizing these tasks right and then after after lunch or you know yeah right after lunch i might have another like 60 to 90 minute time block where i'm gonna i'm gonna listen to all the voicemails that i got th this morning and call everybody back that needs to be called back right because the thing about it is and you know this sometimes you get a, you get called by somebody and you answer the phone and you're on the phone with them for 15 or 25 minutes right oh, yeah. but that same person might have called and left a voicemail that just said, "Hey, listen, I got your voicemail about coming out here at nine o'clock on Tuesday. That sounds great. We'll just see you then." And I just check that one off. Okay, so I'm just going to see that person then. And I'll update the file. You know, insured, confirmed. You know, appointment or whatever. And then I, I, I just saved myself 25 minutes. Right. There's some. I think there's a. Well, that, that's a good point you just brought up. That just reminded me that you never leave a voicemail. Say, "Hey, I'm I'm trying to call to set up an appointment on Friday." sometime give me a call back what they heard was you're going to be out there on friday yeah oh i say i'm going to be out there on friday at nine well, and you did yeah. they didn't call you back but then they called the front uh, the carrier say hey i had an appointment at nine i got a voicemail no they just said you're just trying to set up an appointment for friday never do that right just say hey my name is shane box i'm i'm your adjuster to claim blah 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 and look lost location or not um please give me a call so we can set up a time and date to uh, to inspect. Don't ever put a date you plan on because they're going to think in their head what they heard is you're doing it on Friday. Well, listen, 
I'll tell you, and this is what I, I, I did this and for better or for worse. And again, I think there's a lot of different ways to do this. I would say, Hey, listen, I'm, you know, losing a voicemail. I'm mad. I'm with your insurance company. Um, we'll take a look at your hail damage to your house, not to your car or to whatever, right? At your address. And I'm going to be there at nine o'clock in the morning on Friday. Uh, please call me back to confirm that. Um, you know, and if you need to set a different time, whatever we will. And if I don't hear from them, I'm at their house at nine o'clock on Friday. Cause they're there. Oh, great. Yes. Let's get started. Right. Cause I had it happen where I, I did that. Like exactly yeah. what you're saying. I'm like nine o'clock on Friday and then they never confirm. And then I'm like, I skip it. And then my, the agent's calling and it's like, you, where you, where are you at? You're supposed to be here. I get calls, here, right? I get calls because of that. Another thing, another yeah. trick I, I did, um, someone's doing is, is I don't set appointments on the hour. I said, on like the 15th minute, the 45th minute for some oh, reason. Like, they remember, yeah. For some reason, and I don't, I don't, nowadays, I, I don't send emails to confirm an appointment. I send a text. Hey, this is Shane Bob, yeah. we just spoke and all that. People reply to text more than anything now. Everybody does text. If you're a brand new adjuster working for a major IA firm, you will most likely already be covered under a blanket errors and emissions policy. You probably already pay something like five or $10 per claim for this coverage. And what is errors and emissions? Well, if you're accused of messing something up on a claim, your E and O insurance will step in and help you out. But what if you cause damage or injury on a field inspection? For example, your ladder falls down and smashes the insured's brand new Ford F-150 Lightning. Then a general liability policy will cover you in that instance. Again, you likely have a little bit of protection through your IA firm as a newbie adjuster. However, if you've got a year or two under your belt and you make most or all of your annual income from claims work, then you owe it to yourself to upgrade your E&O and general liability coverages to be customized to you. And depending on how many claims you run in a year, there's a very good chance these policies will be cheaper for you with your own coverages. Better and cheaper? Sign me up. There's only one company that provides E&O and general liability solely to the insurance industry, and that is CPLIC, AKA Kaplik. They even have drone and cyber coverages. Download the free guide all about the different kinds of insurance you as the adjuster should carry at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. And with more than 700 videos, there's plenty more to watch here on adjuster TV. Don't know where to start? Just go to my videos page here on YouTube and type in a search term right here to find an answer to almost any question you have about property claims handling. And we'll see you in the next one.